how to install Mopiko sensors on your gas cylinders. Hi folks, I'm Roger from Offgrid and in this episode we're going to take you through the process of installing Mopiko gauges, if you like, levels on uh, gas cylinders, metal gas cylinders, and uh, how you pair that up with the Servo GX to see the levels on your Servo GX and on VRM. This is what the sensors look like. So these are the Mopiko Pros, round like that. Uh, there's a sync button here that you'll need to use to sort of get it searching for Bluetooth or, or broadcasting its presence on Bluetooth uh, and then the server can pick it up. And uh, on the other side, you'll see you've got this little strip that you'll remove. Prior to putting it in place, we'll be putting some gel on here because there must be no air between this and the metal of the gas cylinder. So we'll need that gel there. And these two metal things are magnets. So we are going to lift up the cylinder and slide this in with its gel. You can't actually slide it along with the tank because you'll remove the gel. So you must push it in and then drop it onto the tank or lift it up so that the magnets are then holding it in place. Okay, so when you open up the box, the Mopeka will not be broadcasting its Bluetooth presence. And to get it to broadcast its presence so that you can pair it with the Servo GX, you need to press the sync button down. I can't remember if you just click it once or if you hold it down. I've held it down already. Um, and then you come here, you come to your setup and you come to integrations and you get to come to Bluetooth sensors. Now you can see there are a number of things here. There's uh, There are a few Ruby tags and this particular Mopeka sensor has shown itself over here. So let's click on that. So that has activated that in the Bluetooth. So uh, the the GX scan found this Bluetooth device. It wasn't active until we hit that little button there. Now it's active. Now when we come back to devices, fuel tank at the top. There we are. There it is there at the top, it says fuel tank, and we will need to set it up now. So if we click on that, so we'll set the whole thing up and then we'll go and put it onto the cylinder. So basically we're saying, well, change it to liters. let's change it to liters, fuel type is RPG. And the volume unit, yeah, volume unit cubic meters. So we're going to change that to liters. And we know it's not, it's probably in 11 kg, so it's around about 22. So we've set it to 22, and the sensor value when empty will say is zero centimeters, and when it's full, it's probably more likely 30 centimeters. So let's expose through that. So it's 30 centimeters. It's RPG, and it's everything that we need to measure right now. So if I come back out of here, I come to levels, you'll see there is my LPG tank now and it is showing zero because we haven't yet put it onto the tank. So we're going to go and put it onto the tank and let's see how that turns out. So in the Mopeka pack, they provide this Mopeka Sonic Grease. This is actually really just dielectric paste. So this is dielectric tune-up grease and uh, that's all that you need. So if you want to just get some of this off Amazon or whatever and uh, or you can just use that. Uh, but if you're going to be taking the uh, unit off in a few years time to replace the batteries uh, in, inside the sensor, you may as well just use um, something like this, just buy this off the internet. Dielectric 
crease, a tune of grease or dielectric paste. What we'll need to do here, you see my lid broke off here, you'll need to put a bunch of paste onto here. And it's similar to Vaseline. It's a little bit messy there, but essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that there's no possibility of an air gap on this. This is probably more paste than you need to put on. Right, we've taken the tank out just to uh, check to see where this should go. The challenge you sometimes have is that if you happen to get this thing uh, so that the, the um, ultrasonic or whatever it was, uh, hits a bit of the equipment in there that could give false readings. So the idea is to put it on and actually check to see if it is a realistic depth. And you might need to play around a little bit, move it around a little bit so that it's not hitting the float levels and the filling mechanisms and things like that. So just, but usually the float mechanisms are off to one side anyway. Uh, they, they're they very seldom directly in the middle. So I'm going to take a chance and just say this one is going to go pretty much straight in the middle. Now uh, there's dielectric grease there, and I'm just going to put this straight onto the bottom, push the grease so that it's flat, and I know without a doubt there's no air layer between the sensor and the metal. And I look down here, this thing is not protruding. In any case, in our particular vehicle, there's actually a, a big hole underneath. I could have done this from the bottom, uh, but I wanted to show it in, in the film, so uh, this is where that is. So if I lift this up now, it should tell me these are fairly full, so I'm expecting they're about 80% full. So I have the Mapeak, Mapeak um, app going here, and it's showing that this is 100%, but what, what happens is that you need to actually provide this with a little bit of information, and, and this is just to to test this now. So additional info, sensor position, let's see, you talk about leveling tools and to be able to zero the sensor, that sort of thing, but I want to know where I can actually set this. So in the settings, I'm setting, let's just say, United Kingdom. Do they even have that here? I'll just say other Europe. And it is a 11 kg bottle and propane. I'm just going to show in percentages. And these are all the things that I need to set. So according to this, it's about 85% which is quite probably reasonably accurate. This is this has just been filled and would be 80%. So the fact that it's saying that it's now 85%, I'm quite happy with the sensor position. As I was saying, you can fiddle with this until finally you get it into an area where it's not bouncing the signal off the equipment inside. But I think that we're fairly safe here because, as I said, the, the float mechanism and other stuff is, is slightly off-center. So this should be okay. So I believe this one is good to go. So we're about to uh, pair the second Mapika sensor with our Servo GX. And you can see all the devices that are showing there. So I'm going to press this in to get it to sync. Yeah, we've got to add them back in again. Continue scanning. So that is shown now. If we come back <coughs> to the devices, <coughs> so 
So yeah. fuel tank. Fuel tank at the top there. This phantom thing that pops up, just ignore it. What you can always do there is just simply remove all devices that aren't actually connected. So you know it's just this one here. And uh, we're going to set it up. So the fluid type we know is not fuel, it's RPG. And the tank level we know is 22. zero when it's empty and at, well at this stage the sensor value it's not on there but I'm just going to set it to let's just say for want of anything else I'm going to set it to 40 centimeters and we're now going to go and attach this to the tank This is just protruding, so you'd have to get it quite carefully over the hole. If you find that this protrudes out from the bottom and you've got a flat mm. bottom in your, your gas locker, you're going to need to use some sort of spaces that you rest this on so that it doesn't rest on here. Right, we have both of the sensors mounted on the bottom of the tanks and we've uh, fiddled around with them. And I'm going to take you through some things here. So in devices, let's go to the LPG front, which is the first one that we fitted and we go to the setup on that. Now, you notice here the sensor value, it, it measures that at 32.1 centimeters, which we believe is quite accurate and so there are no obstacles in the way, no float mechanisms or anything like that. So what we can do now is we can assume, let's just say we've used a little bit of LPG. If you did this when you absolutely filled them to the brim and checked this, you would have the exact height that your gas levels show when they're full. But let's just say for argument's sake that we believe in absolutely full that the gas will be 35 centimeters. So I'm going to change that 40 centimeters and the Come back to here and say, let's change that to, th to 35. Let's put points there. So now this is showing 32. We've said that it goes from 0 to 35. Let's come back. So that was the RPG front. Let's come back and we go to the RPG back. And they're very similar tanks. So what we're going to do now on this one, we fiddled around a bit. And finally, it was sitting at 16 centimeters, obviously hitting the float mechanism or something. We moved around a little bit and then we got to what we believe is the actual level, so 32.9. So we're going to change this to be the same. So 35, 0 to 35. And when we come back and actually look at the levels, they're both 90 something. 
So what you could do is if you if you want to show that it's at it's 80% when you fall, then you just adjust those figures, which from our point of view, we are more interested in seeing the actual usable gas. We don't want to show the 20% because you only meant to fill up to 80%. So I'd suggest that when you've totally filled the tank, uh, check to see what the values are and set that as your maximum. And then you're going from zero to 100% basically of your usable LPG. So this we believe is pretty accurate. We filled up not long ago and have used very little. So maybe we have even more than this, but this is this is enough for us for the time being. So folks, hopefully that is uh, helpful to you setting up a um, Pika on a Sobo GX and just to talk around the whole thing of setting what limits you have and that sort of thing. And uh, yeah, we, we're this van is going off to France in a few weeks time and it's going to be exciting to see exactly how handy this is and how useful it is. So we'll catch you in the next episode. Cheers.